Hey everyone, hi, welcome or welcome back to my channel. Today I am going to be doing the mid-year book freakout tag because Steve said we needed to do it. And this is what he said, I quote, Now I'm putting this monkey's paw curse on you. If David Novak and I have done this, then now you have to do this whether it's Thursday or not. It's not Thursday for me. Get cracking on your mid-year book freakout tab because Steve and David insist you do it and you don't want to get on our bad side. So I feel like I'm being bullied into doing the mid-year book freakout tag. To be honest, I think Steve posted his, Steve and David posted theirs like three weeks ago. <laughs> and I was like, I'm gonna wait, I'm gonna wait a little bit on this. And Steve switched things up. If I, if you don't know who Steve is, Steve is Steve Donahue, who is a book critic and a um, fantabulous booktuber here on the on YouTube. And um, he likes it when we do community things, as, as I do too. Okay, so I use Steve's questions. He kind of mixed things up a little bit. I'm primarily taking out the question, what is your newest fictional crush? Which I'm glad for because, you know, aren't we all the adults here? <laughs> and then he kind of switched things around. I also added a couple of questions from Books and Lala's uh, channel, her mid-year book freakout tag because I quite liked it. And so it's a mishmash of a bunch of things. And so I have to remember that I did a mishmash of this and to do this version of it next year. So let's go, let's go. Okay, so if you are new to my channel, then hello, welcome. My name is Shelly, and I really love books and reading and stories of all kinds. Um, this is an annual tradition. The Mid-Year Book Freakout Tag is an annual thing that we do on BookTube, Talk, midway point, checking in with our reading and kind of talking about the books that we read or plan to read. I'm doing a terrible job talking about this. So anyways, if you want to subscribe, I would encourage you to do so. It's really fun over here, at least according to me. And um, I would, yeah, encourage you to subscribe uh, without any further rambling. Now let's go ahead and get into the meat of this video. I just had an egg wrap, so I'm wondering if, I hope there's no like egg in my teeth. I don't think so, but now I'm feeling self-conscious. Okay, I think we're good. <laughs> okay, so I'm starting with Kayla uh, Books and Lala, her her question that she started with, which I like, which is how is your reading going? Like so far this year, how is your reading going? <laughs> Tell me, best book, best book, best book, worst book, all the books. Tell me about, tell me about how your reading is going. I would love to know. So how is my reading going? I would say the first quarter of the year was kind of rough. Uh, no, mm, I use rough very lightly. I think the previous, I know the previous year in 2023, I read my best book as one of my first. I read Middlemarch in January of 2023 and I was on a high from that book from the moment I finished it to the end of the year. I love talking about it. So this year it was weird because I was going in and I, you know, was sort of doing that digging of and, and, and looking for that book that is just, that sparks, you know, your sparks the joy of reading in you. And I had some good books, but I don't think I had hit the high of Middle March. I don't know if I ever will, to be honest, because that book is amazing. Um, and and so I feel like the first quarter I was trying a bunch of new genres. I was reading a bunch of different kinds of genres. I was trying a bunch of different manga, which I was starting to read for the first time. And I felt like that was that was the reading life, you know this. I don't know. It was sort of topsy turvy. I would say not bad, just um, more exploratory, which means that I think that you can have a lot more misses and you can have like sort of middling hits sometimes. And then I feel like in March, or I know that in March, I made a pledge to myself that I would try to pick up what we would term on the bookish internet as five star reads. I basically decided that in March, I want to pick up books that I think will be total hits for me. And with that mindset, it really switched my my reading life around. It kind of turned it upside down. And I started reading more books that really did start working for me because I y'all are so amazing. Like booktube is amazing. There are people who comment like, you're going to love this book, Shelly. There are people who recommend me books. I know where to find really good recommendations. And there are times where I think I just, I don't know, like I'll read kind of, I'll just read around all of that for whatever reason. And I think in March I was like, stop doing that. Stop reading around 
amazing recommendations, amazing things. It like actually like buckle down, um, put your nose to the grindstone and actually read books you think you're going to love. And that really worked out for me. And so I read some incredible books from March. I would say like I started to hit a high for my reading from March until now. And I say until now because I am currently reading one book, uh, which is very unusual for me. Usually I have like four or five, definitely two books on the go. And now I'm only reading one book and I feel a little bit of um, decision paralysis. Like I don't know what to pick up yet next. I don't know what I'm in the mood for. That's a whole other topic. But I felt like I had this amazing, like total high reading, amazingness, great books, one after the other for the most part for all like March, April, well, maybe April, May, June, I think. And then now I'm like, no, and I don't know what's happening. So that was a long explanation of how my year is going so far. Feel free to be as lengthy as I am or with more brevity in the comments if you if you decide to tell me. I wanna know how your reading is going, how your reading year is going. Okay, um, next question. The best book you've read so far this year. I, I still, it has to go to the Dutch house. Now, as I'm in this decision paralysis mode, I actually think that the Dutch house would be a good choice for me to reread because I listened to the Tom Hanks version and I just fell in love. Oh, I don't know. I just love this. This is, um, this is a novel uh, by Ann Patchett set uh, just after World War II about. And our narrator, Danny, is narrating his story story, but mostly he's talking, he, his narration is about his relationship with his sister Maeve and their relationship together, their relationship to this house that has caused a lot of turmoil in their lives. And it's, it's a novel about expectations and family relationships and the way we change over the years. And I really, really, really love this. And so as I'm in this sort of weird decision paralysis, I almost want to just go back to this. I just finished this about a month ago and I already want to reread it. I just thought it was beautifully done. Beautifully done. The next question is the best sequel you've read so far this year. That would have to go to some of the Elizabeth George books I read for the sake of Elena. Ale Elena. <laughs> Elena was really good. Elizabeth George writes a long-standing murder mystery series. She's been writing this series for the whole of her career. It's pretty much what her career is made up of. Um, and sh she just gets better and better and better every, with, not with, like, it's not incrementally this next book is going to be better than the first or whatnot. But as a whole, she just gets so much like I think stronger in her writing, stronger in her pl plotting. It's the Inspector Lindley series. And if you love really great characters and a good mi murder mystery to boot, um, she, her character development over the course of at least the, I don't know, nine novels I've read in the series so far is just fantastic. There's such, they're nuanced, they're beautiful, and there's definitely like a group that you're following. And each book, you know, she doesn't always focus on like Inspector Lindley every time. At times she focuses more on the relationship between his sidekick um, Barbara Havers and maybe his girlfriend or love interest. I mean she definitely switches it up and she, it, it, like their relationships, the relationships in these books keep it really interesting. Uh, a close second would be The Likeness by Tana French. Famously I DNF'd The Likeness by Tana French ages ago. <laughs> I, I DNF'd it, um, I don't know, a lot, what, quite a while ago, and uh, like seven years ago. And then I decided to try it again, and I thought it was fantastic. It was so good. In terms of like just a singular book uh, sequel that is a follow-up to the first one, this was grand. And I really, I'm so glad I went back to reread it. So, so those two murder mystery authors, uh, Elizabeth George and Tana French, fantastic. Just fantastic. So Steve collapses the next questions down into like one question with a whole bunch of subsets. And he says, a new release you haven't read. So the, the questions are, what is a new release you haven't read yet but want to? What is the most anticipated release for the second half of the year? And what books do you need to read before the end of the year? Okay, um, yeah, I don't, I probably much to everybody's chagrin. <laughs> I'm not really following the new release market. Um, yeah, I'm, I'm just not right now. 
Um, my sweet friend Anita, she keeps me in the loop of what's going on. And also Steve's channel keeps me in the loop of what's going on in a very like basic, basic way. Um, I mean, in that like, I'm not, I'm only paying attention to like Steve's videos on a, like, on just like kind of catching the news of the bookish news, but I'm not really following it with a ton of interest. I know that Susanna Clark, who wrote Piranese and Dr. Mr. Strange and Dr. Nor Jonathan Strange and Dr. Norell, um, she is coming out with a new book and it's going to be set in the same universe as Jonathan Strange and Mr. Norell. Mr. Norell? Is that right? Um, hopefully I have covers flashing on the screen. Um, she's coming out with a new book and I'm actually curious as to how people are going to receive it. So I'm actually more interested in the bookish community's response to her new book. But that is it. There's just, there's, there's nothing. Books I want to read before the end of the year, I don't even have a list for that as well. There are a couple of books that I think I would want to get to, but I'm not going to be putting that pressure on myself. This is a very boring answer <laughs> for this. Okay, wait, actually I do have an, I do have an answer for a book I want to read before the end of the year. I want to read Dorothy Dunnett before the end of the year. Uh, she wrote a his lots of historical fiction novels, I think back in the 60s, let me see. I was right, in the 60s. So she was originally publishing these books back in the 1960s. And she has, this is um, her Lindman Chronicles. It, we're in 1547 Scotland. And we're we are we are following Francis Crawford of Lindman. Um, he's a scapegoat nobleman with crooked felicities and murderous talons. Oh my gosh, okay. I, I just feel like I will really love her. Uh, everyone I know who really, who comments and talks about her, who, who has read her, really, 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 they, they love her. And so I just want, you know, I want to read this before the end of the year. And I have plans to read it in August, so I think that will happen. But yeah, this is like the only book, and it's not even a new release. It's just a book I want to read before the end of the year. Okay, back to Books and Lala. She added the question, genre you've been loving slash reading the most. And that will, that will definitely be historical fiction. I did a whole historical fiction event, read historical fiction, read historical fiction 2024. I do want to do it next year. Um, it was just so much fun. I read a bunch of historical books, historical fiction books in June, but I was already really loving that genre. Um, and I just was realizing it sort of was a slow, I don't, I was slow to realize and admit to myself that I really, 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 really love historical fiction. And it's just been such a fantastic genre to dive into the storytelling. Um, I, I've just been also picking up great hits from it as well. So I will actually leave my June wrap up linked down below because I think I read nine, eight or nine historical fiction books. Um, I think eight historical fiction and one DNF. And you could just see like I, there, I start to put my finger on what I really like about historical fiction. Mostly I like a really good story that isn't message heavy and that is really good at depicting the um, struggles of the time while and using those um, time like p the time period struggles to help shape and mold the characters. That is what I really love. Um, but if you want more about like what worked and what didn't work and the bulk of my historical fiction reading, I will leave June wraps, wrap up, June's wrap up linked down below. All right, my biggest disappointment for the year, that would have to be The Fraud by Zadie Smith. I, I don't know. The thing was is that you could see what a talented writer Zadie Smith is, but that book was structured and sort of put together in a way that I I just, it did not jive with me. I would also have to say uh, Meg Willitzer's The Wife. I was really, really, really surprised at how heavy handed the messaging was in this book and it was not for me. <laughs> it was just not for me. So um, that's, yeah. Ugh. The next question is biggest surprise. I have three they're all historical fiction. Um, and yeah, they were all great. The first one is um, Hannah Kent's Burial Rites, which is set in Iceland, I believe. And we're following Agnes, who is a convicted murderer, and she is set to be executed. And through, um, she's sort of in this holding pattern. She's waiting for her execution date. And so she's waiting um, at, with this family who um, you know, they, they've been set up that she's going to be waiting with them. And it's, it was really interesting because in this waiting period, she is telling the story of why she was 
convicted as a murderer. Like the story behind the the sort of bare bones details of her conviction. And it was really, it was very effective. It was extreme, it was an extremely moody book. And it was so interesting because someone just commented, um, I believe it was Starla. So thank you, Starla. She was like, I think you're, you're going to really like this book. And I kind of just was like, okay, I picked it up, read it right then and there over the next couple of days and really enjoyed it. And it just had its own momentum. So a wonderful surprise. The next one is going to be The Paying Guests by Sarah Waters. I always thought that I would like Sarah Waters. Sarah Waters is someone that I always just thought I would really get along with, but I didn't know I would get along with it this much. Like The Paying Guests is again, probably one of the top reads for this year. It was so good. It was such a good read and um, really, really fascinating. Cut a slow burn, something happens about halfway through and it really just turns the whole story on its head and I really enjoyed it. And I was just surprised at Sarah Waters' talent. Like you hear about how good she is, but it isn't until you actually get into it that you're like, wow, you're a really good author. And then finally, uh, Morgan Llewellyn, similar, uh, 1916. This is the novel, 1916. Um, this book was interesting because someone emailed me, Thomas, so thank you. He emailed me about Morgan Llewellyn and I, a, di a different book actually. And he was like, I think you'll really like her. So I took that recommendation. All of a sudden I was down the Morgan Llewellyn rabbit hole. I was like, what has she written? Like all of a sudden I was just all about like, what, what does her career look like? What does her catalog look like? Um, how long has she been writing? What has she been writing about? And come to find out she's all about the, she's, she sets all her books in Ireland or about Irish folklore, folk tales, um, Irish legends. Um, and she does this series, and this is the first, well, this one, she does a couple of different series, but this one in particular starts with 1916, and it is about the uprising that happened in Ireland, because the Irish are so tired of being treated as second-class citizens next to the English. And so I was, I, I read this, and it was so good. It was so good. And she, Morgan Llewellyn, she wrote characters that I loved. She wrote characters that I hated. It was really, really good. And in a weird way, it just had this, this book had this whole momentum to it. It was like, I heard about Morgan Llewellyn. I found a book at, this book at the used bookstore um, that, uh, you know, with her. Um, and I was so excited <laughs> to see that, that, you know, I could find a Morgan Llewellyn book because I had never heard of this author before. And then all of a sudden I'm reading it and it's fantastic. And it just had this whole momentum to it that I just loved. And I really, really, really enjoyed, you know, this book among, among others. Favorite new author, debut or new to me. I'm going to go with a new to me, Geraldine Brooks. Uh, she is so surprising. Uh, this is Year of Wonders, which is about uh, set in 1666 in a teeny little town that gets the plague and what they decide to do about it. I feel like it's gritty. She's un she's not afraid to go to the darker places of humanity. And it was so good. Now, the I I didn't like the ending. The, the last 30, 40 pages were not my favorite, but she has a back catalog. And I know that, I'm sure that she has better books out there. Primarily, a lot of people have been recommending to me merch, which is about the father in Little Women, um, Louisa May Alcott's Little Women. Instead of following the women, we're following Mr. March and like what he went through in his journey. Um, and I know that, you know, she has the new book, Horse, which came out, I think, the last year or year before, um, which got uh, quite a few um, well, mixed reviews. But I'm just, she's just like somebody I'm so stinking curious about now. And most of her books, I think, are pretty modest. There are, th but like less than 300 pages or between three and 400 pages. Yeah, this is like right at the 300 page mark. So, you know. It, I don't know. There's also, I've been feeling the momentum of a short read as well, which I've been quite liking. So, all right. Um, instead of what is your newest fictional crush? I'm looking at my list. Um, Steve asked, Steve asked, how does your reading break down in terms of mechanism? So am I reading, you know, if I, am I listening with audiobooks, reading physical books or Kindle? Um, or, you know, something other than that, a device, you know, maybe that's a better way of putting it. I have been in a love affair with my Kindle <laughs> for like months. 
months. I have these, I have books, you know, I have, I have these books all around me. And yet the thing that I want to read is from my Kindle. It is my safety blanket. I thought I lost it the other day or I misplaced it. Really, that's the right word. But I like flipped out. <laughs> I was like, how am I supposed to go to sleep? What is happening? Uh, yeah, I, I just think I have an unusual attachment to my Kindle right now. I'm reading a lot from it. I always have a book going on my Kindle and I have just, it's just been a whole thing. Now, do I keep on buying books? Yes, I do. Yes, I do. But my Kindle has been just, has been queen in my reading life. Newest favorite character. Okay, I'm going to steal Steve's answer um, and a lot of people's answer actually to this. Um, Percival Everett's James. James is such a interesting character. He's, he's such a fascinating um, he's such a fascinating individual because he, he's so smart. Uh, James is really a retelling, reimagining of Huckleberry Finn um, at, through uh, in a very personal Everett-y way. And James is a, is a character that really sticks with you. Um, so James is, is one of my favorites. The other one is definitely Catherine. Catherine by Anya Seton. Catherine, to me, touched me in a way. And in, in, in some ways, I, I keep on saying that she's like Jane Eyre. I've said that in like five videos now. And the thing is, is that I really, I identified quite a bit with Jane Eyre when I read it for the first time. Just um, the connection to, um, the connection to spirituality and moving through the world with somebody who is thoughtful and who, who wants, you know, I, I just really, I, I did with Jane Eyre, like herself as a character in a lot of ways, like sometimes taking the moral high road, <laughs> even to my own detriment, um, though I don't always do that or anything. But you know, it's just I could just relate to both her flaws and, and her strengths. Catherine seems like an, um, an older version, updated version of Jane Eyre. Um, she's she has she she has her uh, she's also quiet, thoughtful, um, uh, spiritual. She has a spiritual life that she nurtures. And, you know, I, I think that in uh, in Catherine, you see her grow older than Jane Eyre ever grew. You know, with Jane Eyre, you stop when she's, you know, s still a wee babe in a lot of ways. She's still really young. Um, but with Catherine, you see her become a mother. And the change that comes about in Catherine is beautiful. And you know, and it's all aligned still with her values and morals and her personality. But the way that they evolve in the story is just fantastic. And so I really, really, really adored Catherine. And I would say, honestly, like, if you are a fan of Jane Eyre, you would probably really enjoy this novel. Um, I didn't say what it was about. It is about Catherine and John of Gaunt, um, their very famous love story uh, set in the, I think, 13... Uh, 1300s? Why do I doubt myself? Yes, the 1300s. And it's just a fantastic, it was a fantastic book. Um, but the character of Catherine was something special for sure. A book that made me cry. Well, I'm gonna go, I'm gonna go back with uh, this one. <laughs> I'm, I'm gonna, this book got me very emotional. The depth of a sibling relationship. I have five siblings. Um, my siblings mean a lot to me. They've meant a lot to me. They continue to mean a lot to me. All the, it's it's a lot. This is just a love letter to your sibling. I'm not gonna cry now. I'm not gonna cry now because I that's not what I'm gonna do. But um, just the the beauty of the sibling relationship really meant a lot to me in this novel. Um, a book that made you happy. My camera stopped recording. How rude. <laughs> Um, I'm gonna say One Piece by Aichiro Oda. By Ai Aichiro Oda. <laughs> uh, One Piece, it has, if you are a fan of Calvin and Hobbes and you want to try manga, uh, the humor in One Piece is spot on. It captures just that friendliness, that, that love between characters where they can give each other a hard time. They point out each other's flaws, but they love each other, love each other deeply at the same time. And the humor can be quite clever um, in the way that Bill Watterson's Calvin and Hobbes is quite clever. And so that is one that made me happy. The most beautiful book you acquired is the next book, and it's going to be The Glutton by A.K. Blakemore. It's a, isn't this beautiful? Is this not a beautiful book? <laughs> this is so pretty. Um, I actually critique the cover because I like the a different version of it more. I'll flash it on the screen so you can see. But I like that. Now that I've read this actual copy, I, I like it. I like it a lot. It's so pretty. And I, can, I really like the dark florals and 
I don't know. I, I just, I get it now. I get it now. This, I think, captures more of the mood of the book, whereas the other, the other cover captured more of the, like, the, uh, the concept, like somebody eating something. And I, well, I liked also the illustration. It, ver it was very, to me, it was a little bit of Edward Lear, I think is his name. It kind of reminded me of a nod of Edward Lear, sort of the weird, the quirky, the odd. Um, but I, this, this is not, it's not quirky odd. It's, it's weird and dark <laughs> and that kind of, this captures this more. Okay. And I just love, I like this book as well. So I like this cover. Okay. Um, let's see. Oh, I had substituted a question. What books do you need? Oh, I had substituted a question from last year. Um, the books you've learned from the most or a book that changed your opinion about something. For me, that would be Cast by Isabel Wilkerson, hands down. Um, Isabel Wilkerson argues that we have an invisible caste system that we don't acknowledge here in the US, very much like Nazi Germany and um, India, and she uses the whole book to, um, you know, to prove her argument that we have an invisible caste system between uh, the, the colors of our skin here in the US, and it was fantastic changed my mind. Um, it was, I learned a lot from it. She was so um, poignant, gentle, but also just got her point across so incredibly well. Um, so readable, so interesting, but also it helped me change my own opinion about the, like, the way we see, the way cast works in the U.S. Um, it's, it's just, she just did it perfectly, and I wish that we use her language more often to describe what's happening here in the U.S. And then I think that on a, like an older, I don't know, I don't know where I got this one. It said content creators you've been loving. So um, I'm going to say Carla from Carla Likes to Read. She made some wonderful, incredible historical fiction videos. She's also really new to booktube. So if you're looking for someone new and you want to say hey to somebody, um, you know, that's, that's pretty new to the platform, but is making amazing content, <laughs> then please go to Carla. She's thoughtful and she makes really beautiful uh, discussion um, question, uh, videos. Like she dives into discussion as well as just talking about her reading in general. Fantastic, really good. Um, I will say that I really love Lillian from Paperback Stacks. She has made a couple of haul videos that are m making my heart quite jealous. Um, Victoria from the mu a musical bookworm, her and Christy Lewis at Dostoevsky in space did a video together that really tickled, like just tickled my funny bone. <laughs> just watching them together was really, 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 really sweet. Um, I have been doing a lot, a lot of thinking and sending good vibes over, over to some of Alice from Alice in the Giant Bookshelf's good friends. So, um, Emily, um, a a Emily at Novel Novels, Char her sister Charlie at Charlie Book Brooks Reads, Gemma of Gemma Books, and Jack at Spread Book Joy. They've been on my heart and mind a lot, um, and it's more of their, um, their understandable absence during this time rather than the content I've been loving. It's, it's been more of like, it's been heavy on my heart, um, for their very understandable absence. Um, and then I'm going to also say Melinda at Web of Stories. She has just the best energy. <laughs> I'm going to leave all of these people linked down below. Um, yeah, just know that they're all awesome. Fi hopefully you find someone that you really enjoy some, you know, in that, in that, group that I've mentioned. I've been really enjoying their content. And yeah, that's it from me. So thank you so much for watching. Thank you so much for, for being here and spending this time with me. I really appreciate it. And I will see you all in my next one. Bye!